Hi, my name is Arielle Hurst from ScrumHub.com and welcome back to our series from the Agile Development Conference. This week we asked our panelists question four, what other practices should dev teams pair with Scrum to become even more effective? A lot of the engineering practices that people always used to call XP, I don't know if they're Scrum or they're not, but if you can't integrate, you can't test, if you can't test, you can't learn, sort of game over and you can wave your hands and say self-organized, but you gotta be able to build stuff. Because I come from that testing perspective, I think that all teams should really be thinking about um, examples. So acceptance test driven development, behavioral driven development, uh, specification by example, but really having the conversation to talk about testing early in the process versus after the software has been written. Spec by example, some people call that acceptance test driven development. Because more than any other single practice, it forces us to begin with the end in mind to say what counts as done for a story as a whole team and then iterate into getting that complete. Well, I think explicit workflow, that you explicitly say this is how we're doing it. Now by explicit, I just mean we've talked about it. I don't mean we've written it down. I don't mean we've made it hard to change, but it creates a communication. It becomes the basis of communication. It also then enables you to manage the working process you have. So attend to the flow of the stories from the start of the, scr the sprint till the end don't open them all up just because you can. Tend to swarm on them. Pairing and swarming as social norms across the team seem to deliver tremendous benefits in manufacturing, engineering, legal teams, human resources teams, and of course software development teams. Test-driven development as well seems to be dramatically important once the teams speed up past double velocity. They wouldn't be able to maintain the same quality metric unless they're developing tests before they start developing the solutions. One that we're using a lot lately is story mapping. So, um, you know, as a, as a tool for trying to discover requirements as opposed to our traditional requirements delivery where one person uh, does all of the analysis and hands it, hands it off. So um, that technique we find allows people to really understand what they're building, be able to prioritize with context, uh, do things like that. Continuous integration. Bringing in a tool like Jenkins or Cruise Control, every time somebody touches the code, it notices, it runs an immediate build, runs any automated tests you have. These days, the hot topic is continuous deployment, which is an extension of that, right? If the unit tests pass, let's install it and run the integration tests. So for me, continuous integration, it's the easiest practice to implement, it's the biggest bang for the buck in terms of benefit to your team, and it's a good way to show the team the benefit of the rapid feedback without changing the way they work before you start it. This is totally outside of Agile, is working with uh, maybe interpersonal development and collaboration techniques and facilitation. For me, probably the most impactful change to an organization is leadership agility. Support uh, for a team, you know, using Scrum, using Kanban, or other Agile practices is effective, but without having sponsorship without having leadership focusing on the organizational structures, uh, the organizational culture, those teams can't be effective for long. 